Hey guys. So on this week's edition of Old Man Shouting at Clouds, uh, I wanted to talk to you about a couple of things. So they're kind of related, but not they don't have to be totally overlapping. Uh, one is, and, and by the way, these are both things, again, similar to last time, that I struggled with as a kid, and I look back on now and think, man, if I did a better job of these two things, it would have really made a huge difference for me. Uh, so those two things are, on a really general or like a really high level, thinking about the future and what kind of life you want for yourself, uh, as far as everything is concerned, relationships, um, quality of life, income, uh, life goals, things you want to accomplish, and um, then habits being the second part of that. So what habits do you need to develop to support that vision? So, so starting with the vision, this is something I was terrible at as a kid. Uh, I never thought about the future. I thought pretty much just about right now, and I think that's pretty standard, right? I don't think a ton of kids are great at thinking about what they want out of life, especially not when you're really young. Like maybe you get better about it when you're in high school or maybe late middle school, but generally speaking, I think a lot of kids just naturally just think about the moment. Um, but that as soon as you can start thinking about the future, it's really important to do so and, and think about what you want out of it. And, and it can be as simple as, okay, do I want to own a home someday? Um, where do I want to live? What kind of things do I enjoy? Uh, those are really important things to think about because they can help you set goals for yourself that will lead to that end vision that you have. And it's really hard to set goals for yourself that are meaningful if you don't have an end game in mind. And that that was a big problem for me. And it, it actually really impacted my ability to perform in school uh, because I would go to class every day and I would just sit there and stare at the wall or stare out the window because I couldn't see how learning what I was learning in that class was ever going to help me. You know, I'd sit in geometry and think, I'm never going to use this. I'm not going to become a geometry teacher. I don't want to deal with a bunch of kids like me. No thanks. So I'd just tune out, and I would literally do just well enough to keep my parents off my back. And then the second the test was over, everything I learned was forgotten, gone, poof, in a puff of smoke. That's not a good way to approach it. First of all, you have to be in that class anyway. <laughs> Whether you like it or not, you have to be there legally. I am, as your parent, I am legally required to make sure you go to class. <laughs> so you have to be there. You might as well get something out of it. Uh, and if you do learn the content and you get really good at it, it opens doors for things you can do later on in life, even if you don't think that's something you want to do. Like for me, geometry, let, let, let's use that example. If I had actually taken the time to pay attention in that class and, and really understand the principles and foundations, there are career paths that could have been open to me that weren't open afterwards because I would have had to go back and relearn the information. Plus, I had made up my mind that I hated it and I wasn't interested in it, so I was never going to do it. Well, if you do it and, and then you find ways that that can be useful, you might find a career path that you really do enjoy, but you never would have guessed if you hadn't taken the time to actually learn the subject and get good at it. Um, so, so that's where I say having that kind of vision of what you want in life can really help make things that don't seem meaningful when you look only at the thing. It can help you figure out why it might be meaningful. So even if we just take a super basic example, right? Like let's say you decide, okay, I want to own a house and I want to live somewhere warm and I really want to live near an ocean. Great. Okay, this is a good starting point. 
because you, you can go take a look, even today, at the time I'm recording this, there are apps you can download on your phone where you can look at how much it costs to live pretty much anywhere in the United States. And then you that gives you your baseline, right? Like, okay, I want to live within two miles of the ocean. I can find all these places that qualify, but I want it to be warm, so I've got to look in, like, the lower half of the United States. Okay, I can take a look at all the places that qualify and find out how much it costs to live there. Now I've got a baseline of how much money I have to make for that to be realistic. And then you can look at what kind of jobs pay that amount of money. What are the requirements for those jobs? And you can work it backwards and say, okay, geez, man, houses on the coast are really expensive. If I want to realistically do that and not be living paycheck to paycheck, I need a job that pays, let's just say for the sake of argument and round numbers, I need a job that pays $150,000 a year. Okay, that knocks out a whole lot of jobs that are not going to get you there. So now you can look at the requirements for the jobs that would. Okay, which of those jobs might I actually be interested in? And I'm not going to feel like it's soul crushing going to work every day. Okay, that's going to knock out a bunch of jobs. Trust me. <laughs> so then you, you've got a filtered view of what sort of things you can do that provide the life that you want. And then you can focus on building up the attributes that you need to have to qualify for that job. Well, now you might find, okay, wow, if I want to make $150,000 a year and I don't want a job that's soul crushing, I, for, based on the stuff I'm interested in, I'm going to have to be either a veterinarian or an engineer, ju just for example. Okay, guess what you need to be good at if you're going to be an engineer? You better get good at math. Okay, so now when you go to class in math, that has a purpose. Instead of being bored out of your mind and like, when am I ever going to use this? Okay, you're going to use that to get to where you want to go. Now it's easier to be motivated in that class, which makes it a whole lot easier to pay attention, which makes it easier to do well. So that's why I say having a vision for your future and what you want out of life is super critical as soon as you can possibly do it. Yeah, if you're 10 years old, it's pretty hard to think that far in advance. I get it. But if you're 13, if you're 15, you better start thinking that way, even if it is hard, because that's when the decisions you start making actually have some real life impact. When you're eight years old, 10 years old, most of the decisions you're making aren't going to impact you past a few days or a few weeks, right? You make a really, really, really bad decision. Maybe your parents ground you for a week or two. Okay, that doesn't have a massive impact on the rest of your life. You're 15, you're 16, you can start making decisions that are going to really have a bad impact on your life or a good impact on your life too, right? So perfect example, let's say you get your driver's license. You make a really dumb decision to drive 100 miles an hour down a residential street. Car pulls out of the driveway, you don't have time to react, bam, you crash into it, okay? That's a decision, believe it or not, that can impact the rest of your life. And the big way it can impact the rest of your life is it can shorten it <laughs> to right then and there. Bigger consequences. So by the time you're that age, you really do. I know it's hard because it was hard for me too, but you've got to start thinking about what you want out of life and then start making the decisions that help to set you up for that life. And that's where habits come in. And habits are another one. Again, it's hard to create at a young age but you're doing it already, right? You have already created some habits by the time you're eight, 10. And those habits can work for you or they can work against you. Now you've probably mostly heard about the habits you have that aren't super productive because as parents, <laughs> that's what we're gonna, we're gonna focus a lot of attention on because we're trying to help you. It's not because we like being mean or busting your chops, it's because we are genuinely trying to help you. We're trying to mold you into effective adults because you're going to spend the most, the biggest chunk of your life is spent as an adult. And it's when the consequences are the greatest and you have the least help and the least support. 
you have the least amount of a safety net beneath you. So that's why we spend so much time and energy focusing on trying to get rid of the traits that are not going to help you in adulthood. Uh, but habits are a big one to develop and develop them as soon as you can because a habit once created is very hard to break and that can be good or it can be bad. So a bad habit, and this is, I'll use myself as an example. This is one I developed at a young age and it was, I still fight with it today. This is how hard it is to break, but procrastination. I would put off things I didn't feel like doing until later, which translation, I just didn't do them, right? Because you can always find something else you'd rather be doing and be like, oh, I'll get to this later. I'll clean my room later. I'll make my bed later. Yeah, see that? Oh, Made a bed. Made a bed. I'll get to it later, right? Yeah, later never comes. Because you can always find something else you'd rather be doing. And if you get used to doing that, if you get used to doing what you feel like doing first and the stuff you need to do later, you just won't do it. One of the best habits I can suggest for you to build is if there's something you need to do and you don't feel like doing it, do it right now. Stop what you're doing. Go do it. Knock it out. You don't have to worry about it anymore. And that is a super productive habit to develop. Okay, that would that habit will pay dividends the rest of your life if you can develop it young. Uh, I don't feel like doing my homework right, right when I get home. I want to go play basketball with my friends. I want to go draw. I want to play video games. Stop. Do your homework. Do it now. Get it done. And then you don't have to worry about it later on. And you know it's done, so it's not going to be on your mind saying, oh, I've still got to write that paper. Oh, I've still got to do that math homework. No, you don't. It's done. You did it. You put your time and energy into it. It's over now. Now you can go do the things you want to do without having to sweat the things that you know you still need to do. That's a crucial one. Uh, th this habits conversation can translate back into the last old man shouting at Cl clouds episode with finances, right? If you get in the habit of saying, okay, every time I get money in, I'm going to set a portion of that money aside for whatever, right? I'm, I'm going to set for every dollar I get, I'm going to set 25 cents aside for my future. I'm going to set 25 cents aside for the Xbox I want to buy, 25 cents aside for charity, because that's important too. There are a lot of people who have less than you and, and don't have the same opportunities you have. It's important to help them. Uh, but those habits, if you develop them at a young age, man, I'll tell you, they stick with you in adulthood. Like everybody I know who was a really good saver as a kid, they're still good savers now as adults. And if anything goes wrong for them, it's not a huge issue financially. Like if their car breaks down, they have money saved up for it already. And it's not, you know, yeah, it's not what they wanted to spend their money on, but they have that money if they need it. Other people who didn't develop those habits, if something like that happens, they're putting that on a credit card and now they're paying interest on it. So that, so what is interest? If that repair costs a thousand dollars and they have to put that thousand dollars on a credit card because they don't have it, guess what? If they can't pay that thousand dollars off at the end of the month, there's an interest charge. Okay. And most credit cards right now are like, it's 20% interest. So now what's 20% of a thousand? It's $200. So now they don't just owe a thousand dollars. They owe $1,200. That keeps going. Okay. So you can see how that would snowball really, really quickly and become a huge problem. But the person who saved that money and they had that thousand dollars in their savings, they pay it right away. They don't owe any interest to anybody. They're good. They move on with life. So habits are super, super important to develop and be intentional about. I'm going to develop a good habit on this. I'm going to develop a good habit on that. Exercise is another one. That's going to be a whole other video because I think <laughs> man, the, the, the name of this series is going to be perfect. Old man shouting at clouds. But like, I think our society is going in completely the wrong direction on this where 
I, I, I should rewind that a little bit. Not totally, because things like marathons, ultra marathons, endurance events are getting more and more popular. So, but there is a bifurcation, right, where there's a lot of the society right now that's becoming more and more and more sedentary, meaning they don't move around much. And that's a huge problem because it's really, really terrible for your health. Um, there are all, there are videos right now and research that's been done that indicated that one of the best things you can do to ensure longevity is to exercise frequently. And it was something like a 400% decrease in all cause mortality for people who rec uh, man, exercise regularly. Uh, uh, this is a, a Huberman is where I got that information. Huberman's got a podcast and YouTube series that you can check out, at least as of the recording of this video. But the research that he was quoting found that, so all cause mortality, meaning anything, any reason whatsoever you could die, it could be heart failure, could be you got sick, could be you got hit by a car, died of lung cancer, whatever. But people who exercised regularly had a 400% lower chance of dying at any time for any reason. So, yeah, develop a fitness habit and develop it early. Uh, it's going to pay dividends for you. But at any rate, that's it. I think that's enough rambling for this edition. Um, I hope it helps. And uh, we'll catch you on the next one.